Welcome back, netizens of Earth. What we're going to be talking about in this next tutorial is working with the Dreamweaver interface. Getting used to what's going on inside of Dreamweaver, setting things up the way we like them, and getting a little bit more familiar with what we're going to be doing in the upcoming videos that you'll be taking a look at soon enough. So, first and foremost, I guess to get us all on the same page, if you've opened up Dreamweaver already, and if you've messed around with things, and if you've done different things like that, what I'd like to show you is that you can go to the window menu up at the top of Dreamweaver, this one right here, and you'll notice that there are workspace layouts. In other words, what your Dreamweaver interface looks like. And as you can see, there are a number of different workspaces that you can choose from. App Developer, App Developer Plus, the classic one, which is the one that I'm using at the moment, Coder, Coder Plus, Designer, Designer Compact, squeezing things down, Dual Screen, if you happen to have a dual screen set up at home. Or, as you can see, you are also able to create a workspace, or in other words, get the windows exactly the way you want them to, eliminate, remove things that you don't often use, or whatever the case may be. And then you could save this workspace, new workspace. And for example, I'd created one called Basic Recording that I can choose whenever I want to. However, what I want us to do is to choose the classic. And if you had chosen classic, and let's say you accidentally closed a couple of windows or something along those lines, you can also just reset your classic. So if I do that, you can see that I've got this showing up in this fashion. Notice that instead of always having to go to the window menu and access your workspace layout there, you can just do so directly from this top part of your screen here. And you'll notice it says classic and there are all of those list elements that we saw just a little bit earlier. So let's set our workspace to classic and that'll give us all the same defining environment that we can work in. So there's a lot of features inside of Dreamweaver and some look rather intimidating when you're taking a look at all these buttons and bells and whistles and things that we can see in front of us. However, don't be overly concerned about every single one of these elements because we're going to be approaching them in a step-by-step -step fashion. We'll be looking at things a little bit more in depth when we need to work with them. So in other words, for example, Adobe Browser Lab is a new feature. Actually, it's been around, but it's a new integration into Dreamweaver with CS5. And we'll be looking at that at a much later date. Although, if you have it open, I'd just like you to have it closed. So if it is closed and you want to know how to open something, it's just like any other Adobe application. If you double click on the name, you can see that it'll open up. Double click on it again, it'll collapse. Notice that there are these little arrows here on the side. If you collapse that, you can see things with their icons and you can also see their names. These, however, can also be made smaller just by moving them in that fashion, as you can see here. So you position your mouse right at this point and you'll see the left and the right arrow allowing you to move that. And again, if you open that up, you get the regular amount that we see here, you can collapse it. And if you wish, as I mentioned, by moving them down in this fashion, you can just have access to the icons as opposed to any other elements that are in here, like the names of these files. So this is a great way for you to work if you have a limited amount of real estate, which can be a problem, especially if you're recording your screen at 1024 as I am. But nevertheless, it is just a nice way for you to sort of customize your screen, get things working exactly the way you want them to look. I'm going to expand this and I'm going to open them up. As you can also see, these little tabs allow you to click through the different tab windows and that's not unusual for anybody who's worked with Adobe applications before. I just want to bring to your attention though that you can move these little windows so that they're standalone floating windows as this one is right here. Let's say I want to move it back. I didn't actually want to move this out of its confines. So it's not a matter of taking the dark screen here. Now look, if I were to close this, bang, it's gone. Oh no, where did my CSS window go? Whenever you accidentally close a window or do anything like that, just come back to the window menu. 
And in the window menu, we can now open up that CSS styles, and there it is, right? So the window menu gives you access to all kinds of windows that you may or may not already have open. So if I want to move it back in, you got to take it by its name, CSS styles, and I'll click on that, and I'll drag it. And notice when I do drag it, you'll see that it highlights, it becomes transparent, and you'll see like the little blue highlighting the area that it wants to drop into. There you go. And then you can move it to be the first one in this list if you wish, among other things. Again, you could just double click it and collapse it if you need as well. So all of these different windows are going to be very important for us when we're working inside of Dreamweaver and I'll explain the vast majority of them to you in this Dreamweaver tutorial. The last thing I want to talk to you about, well actually maybe not the last thing, but one of the last things I'll talk to you about is this window right here. It's called the Properties window. And the Properties window is one of the most important elements of Adobe Dreamweaver applications. You'll find one inside of Dreamweaver, as we see right here, and you'll also find one inside of Flash CS5 as well. If you've ever worked in those two programs, then you've seen these before. However, if you're new to Dreamweaver, or Flash for that matter, the Properties window acts in a similar fashion in both applications. Basically, or essentially, anything that you select in your HTML page or in your code view or anything like that, when you select an item, the properties window gives us information about that item. And it allows us to do a number of things. It allows us to, you know, convert simple unstyled text into something that is a paragraph or a headline, among other things. We can also do other things like work with CSS, as we can see here with the IDs and classes. And, you know, we can create list items, among other things. And we'll get into that a little bit more in detail when we examine things closer. When we're opening up a HTML page and we can take a better look at what's going on with it. Also, let's take a look at a couple of other things. Up here at the top, you'll see, now I don't really have anything happening inside of Dreamweaver, but let's say I were to create a new HTML page. If I did that on this welcome screen, You'll notice a couple of things that we can see here with the HTML document. Now, I haven't saved it or done anything like that yet, but we'll get to that eventually. We can determine how we want our screen to look. And as you can see, we'll, we'll, we'll get into what code split design and live view is in, a neck, in another video. But we can determine how things look by um, choosing our layout right up here we can choose from a number of different ones and we can decide whether or not we want to have our code and our design views right next to each other. There's also elements here like being able to extend Dreamweaver with the extension manager which of course we'll talk about later and there's also the abilities of defining sites and managing your sites but that's something that we're going to be again discussing in the next video as well. There's also means of searching CS Live is a service that we'll discuss in future. But this is probably the most readily available and widely used element inside of Dreamweaver, and that it allows us to insert elements. This is called the Insert window. Now, the Insert window can be a separate window. Right now, I'm in classic mode. But if I was, you know, for example, here's my basic recording mode that I talked to you about before. And you can see that my inserts here, I'll just collapse this and this. My inserts here are visible on this long set of lists over there. If you don't like that, you can go back to your classic recording, your classic mode, I should say, rather. And you can come in here and say, I would like to insert, as you can see, a hyperlink or an email link or an anchor or a horizontal rule, or tables, or divs, and images, among other things, or media like Flash and other things like that. You can see the SWF for Flash, among other things. So there's a lot of different elements, also comments and stuff like that. But notice you can also insert layouts specifically, form elements, data elements if you're working with dynamic information, spry elements which are JavaScript generated um, navigation elements, among other things. In context editing, text, different text stylings, and some favorites that you can control click to customize. However, the common ones are the ones that we'll oftentimes be seeing. So, based on this, we've sort of 
taken a look at the basic interface just a little bit here, nothing really too in-depth. But what we're going to be doing in the next one is talking about our different views, how we can view our web pages inside of Dreamweaver, and what we're going to be doing with all of this once we get started. So we'll do that in the next video. Stick around, come back.